Look at this. Right there. Hey, welcome back to the garage. Now that we've got the rings measured, the next step is to measure the bearing journals, both the rods and the mains, and find out what size bearings we're going to need to put this back together. While we're at it, we'll inspect the journals, make sure everything is good, make sure we can reuse this crank. Let's get into it. First, just do a visual inspection. Look for, at them, look for any deep grooves, anything that looks just out of the ordinary. Discoloration, flaking, anything like that. Look for cracks as well. One other thing to look at is over here, this isn't a bearing surface, that, but this is the rear main seal. I've got a pretty good groove right here. If that's really deep, it typically will leak or seep oil. But then just run your fingers across it. I can feel this one's got a little bit of a ridge in it. I can't catch it with my fingernail, but I can kind of feel it. Here, there's definitely a ridge between one rod was here and one was here. So between the two, there's definitely a ridge. In fact, it's smoother here than here. So I think this is low. Probably just a couple of thousands, but I can feel it. And then do the same thing on your main journals. Take a look at those. This one's got a really good high spot in here. I mean, really good. And I see... I don't know what that is. Looks like a groove or something. Maybe a flaw in the casting. At any rate, I can catch my fingernail on that, which I don't like at all. So, given the choice, I would not use this crankshaft without machining it. I'm going to check these journals with just a caliper here. You want to measure every bearing journal. So on these rods, you want to check here and here, and then the mains you want to check. Check them in at least three different positions. I'm going to check up and down. Two point oh nine four, and then check side to side, just in case it's oval shaped. 2.096 and check in multiple places. Don't check in us in the same line here. So check on the inside and the outside just in case there's a groove you want to check. So this one here that feels a little low to me. This one's 2.092 and this one was 096. So yeah, this one's about four thousandths lower than that. Not terrible, um, but like I say, this one right here, there's something going on that concerns me. Measure all of your journals. Make sure they're all within a few thousandths, both within themselves. So across this way and this way, check a few different ways and make sure they're all very, very similar. You probably want within about, say, five thousandths of each other across the entire crankshaft. Once you've checked all of that, then you can check the number that you have on one of these against the specification in the book for your main journals and your rod journals to find out if they have been turned down in the past. You want to know if they have been, you need to get undersized to begin with. I think these are standard though, because again, usually you can look at the bearings that you pull out and there will be a size. All I see on these are part numbers. If it's been rebuilt, there will be usually a size and then a part number and a date code and oftentimes the manufacturer of the bearing like Clevite or something. But these I think are factory bearings, which surprises me being as old as this engine is, but who knows, maybe it sat in somebody's garage for decades. This is the second crankshaft we have. 
Well, we'll take a, a measure on these. So, for example, these rod journals are right at 2.10, which is the nominal size for these journals. So these are basically not worn at all. Now, one thing that I found interesting, though, if I measure this main journal, I come up with 2.438 inches, which I believe is 10 thousandths under size. We'll verify that with the specification for a 350. All of them are the same, though. So that may mean that we need standard rods and 10 under main bearings. And then our standard size pistons. Inspecting this crank a little bit more, look at this. Right there. Holy cow. It almost looks like somebody grabbed onto the journal with a pair of vice grips. Can't imagine that anybody would have done such a thing, but I, I can definitely feel that. So, this crankshaft also needs to be reground. So, the price on this build is going up a little bit. Hopefully it's not going to be too bad. That's all there is to it. We've checked the crank. We've checked the block. Now we can order the rebuild kit. Thanks for watching.